Welcome to our webinar on Automotive Spies. My name is Christoph Ebert and I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services. Today I will explain you a very key success recipe, namely how to prepare for a successful assessment. Now we have already learned that the assessment is used for two purposes. The assessment is on the one side a yardstick which allows us to see how well we are doing with respect to our process, with respect to external best practice. At the same time, it also gives a visibility to any of our customers to see are we doing good enough and this combination of a yardstick for own improvement at the same time a benchmark for our customers, that's a unique advantage of the models like CMMI or ASPICE which are governed by the ISO 33000 series. So let us look into how can we achieve a successful assessment. Now assessment has advantage for both parties, for the supplier and for the customer. As I said, the supplier will get a visibility about their different suppliers, can make a risk assessment while the customer <clears throat> itself can also say here or there we need improvement. For you as the supplier, you will see how well you are doing with your own processes versus the external yardstick. Did you follow the typical important goals which project should achieve? We do many assessments worldwide and we do this assessment directly, we do them via Skype, so we have different possibilities to do them, also virtual assessment. But the top three failure points which we always see in the assessment is on project management, especially estimation, then configuration management that is inconsistencies, so we have software which cannot be integrated well, and we have the topic of requirements engineering, specifically traceability, which is insufficient. And these are the major challenges. And if we now look and zoom into the assessment situation, an assessment team like uh, what we see on the picture means they will, before the assessment, collect data. That means they look into project information, they look into documents which they receive from the respective uh, organization which they assess how they are working, what are their reference processes, how they are doing these things. Then they look into interviews, that means a direct interaction with project managers, with configuration managers, with engineers, with senior management to see about is there a consistency between what is written on the paper and the actual practices as they are applied. And after the interviews, all these different pieces are put together. And these are very many pieces. We talk about hundreds of different like jigsaw pieces which we have to bring into a context. And for that reason, I will also talk in this webinar about tool support because an assessment only by means of paper or spreadsheet, this will not work. It needs also appropriate tools. For the people who are interviewed, I think there is also a big advantage. The big advantage is that they understand <clears throat> on the basis of the questions how they are doing but can also learn in terms of what are potential gaps so that they can improve. In the end, we don't make improvements just for the sake of ASPICE or CMI. What we really want to achieve is that we understand and try to continuously improve our processes. Evidently, the people which we interviewed should not be experts on the underlying model. So we are not going to expect any kind of model experience or model understanding with respect to that somebody could say, well, this is a practice which maps to this expectation of a model. This is not the case. These guys in the assessment teams is a handful of people. They are the people who really understand the model. The people who we interview, which are man, many more, should simply explain how they are working. If we ask somebody, how are you testing software, please explain your test strategy. What we want to hear is how they uh, prepare the test cases, how they prepare the test infrastructure, how they estimate the effort, 
how they record the results of the testing. We don't expect anything like this relates to a test requirements in ASPICE. That would be ridiculous. These people should do their job and their job is not ASPICE. Their job is to produce a good product. These people do their job, which is understanding how to improve a process. And in sitting together, they will achieve a unique benefit, which is understanding what are gaps and how to improve it. Let us look into the timeline of an assessment. We put it here into a two-week time frame, just to compress it towards what is a typical reasonable approach. 10 days, sometimes 15 days from a level two, level three assessment is what we talk about. We have a preparation activity where we can of course take more time, but normally a few days to make a planning, to have the interviews, to make a structure. Of course, we should also ensure that the people are available, the documents are available. We have to select the right projects. Typically, we select projects which are almost finished, some which are in the middle and some which are in the beginning, so that we can look into different type of processes along the V-model, such as testing, such as requirements engineering, such as systems engineering or coding. Then we have data collection. On-site we look into documents, in Skype we can do that remotely. So that means even if you use only collaboration environments, which we often do for remote customers because it reduces travel overhead, this is perfectly possible. We look into the documents, we judge the documents, we look that we see for the different elements which we expect from a process that we have different type of evidence. So the assessment team also has to ensure in their planning and data collection that they not only hear from the people I'm doing that, but that they also see that they are doing it. This is like in school when the teacher would ask who has done the homework. Everybody would say, yeah, I've done it. Is that sufficient? Well, I doubt it. If you go backwards to your own school time, maybe you would say, yes, I did it and hope the teacher would not ask you. That's why a teacher would ask two people to go in front and show how they did their calculation or how they learned their um, English or French words. In other words, what we do here is collecting evidence from different perspectives. Then comes this consolidation, which is putting these jigsaw pieces together and achieve some sort of preliminary finding the preliminary finding would directly as a part of the assessment being fed bed or presented to some of the stakeholders. Why? Because we need to ensure buy-in. The worst you can do in an assessment is that things are brought together and as a theoretical report just thrown over the fence. This will not be accepted and on the other hand it will be typically rejected because there is no buy-in. So when we do an intermediate consolidation, we give this feedback directly to the organization. The best possible approach, by the way, is if the assessment team is not only staffed by external experts, which I never recommend, but take your own people in the assessment team and ask some expert like us with one or two persons to lead the assessment. That means we ensure that the rules are followed, but your own people are directly in the interviews. That gives credibility and it gives hands-on experience or some sort of traceability what was going right, what was going wrong. At the end we finalize and that means after the 10 days, 12 days, we are ready. We have a report which is understood, which gives us insight not only about what is going wrong, but how we can improve. The most valuable part of an assessment is not so much the records of what has been done in the past two years. The most important asset of any assessment is the list of improvement actions. And this should not be 97 improvement actions. It should be a few, it can be 10, it can be 20, but that's it. Because at the end of the day, they have to be implemented and they are implemented by the people who have to do the normal project work. It means Having too many actions at the end will lead nowhere. Rather, we do the assessment on a yearly basis and we have a steady or agile approach. Our recommendation to any process improvement today is completely agile. It's not anymore like in the old days that we do every two, three years an assessment and we see suddenly a big surprise 
because often the big surprise will not happen. No, we have to ensure that the assessment gives us a steady progress. Now with all these different information pieces, it's mandatory to use an assessment tool because it gives us not only a good documentation, a nice um, output, but it also ensures that we bring things together. And Compass, which is a tool which um, Vector has been creating over the past 15 years, is just released now in its latest edition, gives us all this necessary tool support in order to record the different results, map it to the model ingredients and create the necessary outputs. If you want to look into more information on Compass, it's www.vector.com slash Compass. Compass is available not only for assessment with um, ASPICE, we have it also for TARA, for HARA, that means it's for security, it's for safety, because all these assessments need some sort of tool. Now there's one perspective in Compass which is what we call the internal view, the interview mode, which is what we fill out during the assessment. We get a good guidance into what are elements which we still have to cover, what are elements where we already have enough evidence. We achieve the traceability, we can also easily say this is applicable, this is not applicable. Then in a consolidation perspective we can see what are the results, how do they map to the expectation of the ASPICE model, such as different goals which we have, are they satisfied, are they fully satisfied, largely satisfied or are they not satisfied. And with this we can then start an improvement project. Remember, the assessment is not to achieve a level, the assessment is for continuous improvement. Improvement means always a change. The change will work if there is a certain observed pressure. If you are doing fine, a change is not really necessary. People know uh, when we want to, for instance, lose some weight, then we can of course, um, in, as a New Year's resolution thing, I will do more sports, but after one, two months we stop it because there is no pressure. Now, if we speak with a friend and we commit we are going to do the sports, then we have a real pressure because we have this commitment, we will make the change. Now what could happen is that the result is mediocre because we do it without control. You can do a lot of sport but they will not help much because maybe you don't uh, activate the right muscles. So with our methodology of change coach we are also able to really improve into a state which gives a better performance than the previous stage. And as I said, this should be a steady approach, an agile approach. We do improvements in sprints and the sprint will help us to achieve a steady progress. To summarize, we have seen in this webinar about the benefits of ASPICE assessment. We can also see that with external expertise like Vector Consulting Services is bringing we can put our fingers not only on weakness, but we also bring in benchmarks, best practice, how to overcome this weakness in a pragmatic way. We often see companies which theoretically comply to all of the goals of ASPICE, but it's inefficient, it's a dead end street. You can be theoretically perfectly implementing such model and next year being bankrupt. Why? Because if you don't have a business goal behind, it will not help. So we help you to always focus into doing it efficiently, doing it with a good business attitude. And therefore we recommend that you go with experienced assessors, but bring also your own people in the team. And that being said, I thank you very much for attending this webinar on how to do a successful assessment. I summarize in a nutshell, the first thing is, that the assessment always has to serve as a yardstick for knowing where you are and also giving your customers a perspective where you are, but also to trigger real improvements. Second, don't do it theoretically. Ask for professional guidance in order to have the assessment really giving you a value, how to improve. Thirdly, always benchmark with respect to best practices not just get a list of failures, but much more important, get a list of decent action points, not too many, but some amount which really brings you forward. And lastly, 
use a professional tool like Compass in order to have the assessment results really consolidated well, reusable and for that reason also not overlooking some critical content. I wish you all the best with your improvement projects with using ASPICE. If you have any questions, just contact us www.vector.com/consulting. Now, have a good success. Goodbye.